aspiring entrepreneurs with access to wisdom and experiences of successful individuals. DC and Young Entrepreneur Schools take a giant leap in fostering innovation by signing an MOU with Innovation Mission Punjab. Together, we embark on a journey to nurture entrepreneurial projects and incubate startups for a brighter future. The Young Entrepreneurs Board and School plays a very vital role in instilling important entrepreneurial values in students such as resilience, adaptability and problem-solving skills. It promotes an entrepreneurial mindset that encourages students to embrace challenges, learn from failures and persevere in the face of obstacles. This mindset prepares the students for success not only in the business world but also their personal and professional lives. Experience the vernacular of knowledge and inspiration with our main teacher, a TEDx talk at DCN Young Entrepreneur School. DCN Yes is the forefront of STEM education, offering dynamic learning environment that fosters innovation and curiosity. At the heart of our commitment is AELC, Aerospace Experiential Learning Center, providing a transformative flight for our yespreneurs. Through hands of experience and cutting edge curriculum, we propel students towards a future where science, technology, engineering and mathematics seamlessly blend with creativity and real world applications. Through various memorandum of understandings and tie-ups, YES actively engages with like-minded organizations, institutions and industry players to create synergies and unlock new opportunities. DCMS hosts two signature events that epitomize innovation and intellectual prowess, TISCOM 3.0 and IBM Fest 3.0. TISCOM, the Young Entrepreneurs Indian Premier School's Business Conclave, serves as a vibrant platform where industry experts, educators and students converge to explore the latest trends and advancements in technology. On the other hand, IDH Fest 3.0 is a celebration of a creativity and problem solving, bringing together minds from diverse disciplines to ideate, innovate and showcase their talents. So glimpses ahead. From groundbreaking initiatives such as Entrepreneurship Development Centre to our strategic alignment with a global education benchmark acknowledged by figures like Tony Blair, our commitment to innovation is unwavering. The forthcoming inauguration of Western Australian Board Curriculum promises to be our next significant milestone, adding another panel to our camp. As we continue to champion holistic education, fostering skills, global perspectives and transformative learning environment, we embark our journey to shape future leaders equipped for success and ever. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Richard, for providing us a walk through the DCM League of Schools and DCM Young Entrepreneur School. Moving ahead, it is now most appropriate to invite on stage Mr. Peter Bryant, mentor, SCSA's International Education Program, to walk us through the Western Australian curricular modalities while also providing an insight into the Center of Innovation for School Leadership slated to be conceptualized at this new Young Entrepreneur School. I am to your applause, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Pijimaran. Start by saying that 
my government has sent me here to help sign the agreement today that we have been working on for these past six months. We are very proud that the government of Western Australia will be cooperating with this year, yes, and together we will be working across cultural boundaries. Um, the slideshow, here it is. This is a very um, short snippet. I don't have much time today, so I want to take you through what the Western Australian curriculum is very quickly, who we are as the School Curriculum and Standards Authority. So if we could move to the next slide, please. Just by way of geography to start with, the city I come from is Perth. It's located on the west coast of Australia. And geographically, it's the closest part of Australia to India. So we're natives. There are many people from India already living, working and studying in Australia. And most people in Australia don't look like me. Australia is a very multicultural, very diverse place with many people from all over the world. In Perth, there are 240 different languages spoken on our streets every day. So we're not that far away. If we move to the next slide, this is what my city looks like. It's modern, it's exciting, it's dynamic, it's small by your standards, but we like to call it home and people from all over the world are welcome to come to Perth and join us. Next slide, please. So we have many international students. Here are some um, images so you can see what their life looks like in Perth. And students from across the globe are welcome to join us in our city. One of the things I'm going to explain to you today though is with the Western Australian curriculum, you can actually go anywhere in the world. So we would love you to come to Perth, but don't limit your opportunities. You can come anywhere in Australia, pursue university studies, you can take our qualification in the world. And I'll show you some examples of that today. Next slide. I thought I'd start by explaining who we are. School Curriculum and Standards Authority, or SCARSA, for short. And in my Australian accent, we say SCARSA. Now, the SCARSA is uh, an organisation belonging to the government of Western Australia. You can see the coat of arms there with some of our native wildlife, the boomerang, developed by our Indigenous people as an innovation that has stood the test of time. We actually report to two different ministers for education. I want to stand here today and tell you we are not a business. We are a government organisation and I stand in front of you as someone who spent 25 years teaching. That was my love, my passion, my profession. So I am a teacher from this system and everyone that works at the SCARSA is an educator. We're not business people. We're here because we believe in the power of education and we know the power of curriculum to change people's lives. Next slide, please. So our roles, we have actually been in these roles since 1913. So although you may be hearing about us for the first time today, our organisation is over 100 years old. Within our context, we are a curriculum provider. We write and design the curriculum. We conduct university entrance examinations. We provide certification of high school graduation. And we also provide equipments for people from around the world that want to come and study in Western Australia. So we have many roles all in one. If we move to the next slide. Since 1987, we've operated outside of Western Australia. These are some of our very long-term partners. And while I don't expect you to recognise their logos, you can see from the flags that there are many different parts of the world. What I would like you to notice is the years. This is how long these schools have been with us. And what my government is most interested in is long-term partnerships that stand the test of time. Because that's when our cross-cultural work is going to be at its strongest. I will recognise Sunway College in Malaysia as our foundation school, which has been delivering Western Australian curriculum very, very successfully for 36 years. Next slide, please. Recently, we obtained equivalence from the Association of Indian Universities. This was very significant and the culmination of a lot of hard work by our organisation. The reason this is significant is because the AIU has recognised, after intense study, that our curriculum is equivalent 
to that offered by the state and central boards here in India. So that means examinations, qualifications and courses completed under the Western Australian curriculum are regarded by the authority as equivalent to those Indian qualifications, which has importance for students that are undertaking them. If we move to the next slide, when you study the Western Australian curriculum, you are studying something that is recognised globally. Here I've picked some um, well-known countries for post-secondary study. The university names listed there have received graduates from our system that have taken our qualifications and entered university in those places. So the top universities in the UK, the US and Canada, they know what the Western Australian curriculum is and they recognise its value. If we move to the next slide, our curriculum is built on a series of guiding principles. And during our engagement with DCNES, we felt there was a strong alignment between what the school is trying to do in terms of revolutionising education here in this part of India and the way that our curriculum is built. So we believe in lifelong learning. We don't teach children how to remember things, we teach them how to learn. That is the premise on which our curriculum is built. Multiple pathways, there's not one size that fits all for students. Our curriculum can provide different outcomes to meet students where they are at. There is strong breadth and depth in our curriculum by the way our curriculum is designed and constructed. We expect students to choose courses that challenge them. We don't want them to do things just because they're easy. And literacy and numeracy is fundamental because remember our curriculum has been designed by educators like me. Moving on, there are also general capabilities appearing in each of our curriculum programs. So as well as the knowledge and the skills that are delivered in our courses, there are 21st century skills or soft skills, or in your context, the type of entrepreneurial skills that students must know and learn to survive in the 21st century. And all of these are integrated into our curriculum. If we move on to the next slide, this is a very significant difference between our curriculum systems and some others that you may know. While the ability to do a final exam is important, in our system we recognise work that students do along the way. So their final mark out of 100 is 50% from the final exam and 50% from work that they complete here at school, conducted by their teachers, assessed by their teachers with support and guidance from us. It's quite a different approach. It says to students that coming to school is about learning and that the work you do in your class with your teachers provides opportunities for feedback which should contribute to your final outcome. The next slide shows the two curriculum programs that we will be offering here at DCMES. There is a year 11 and 12 program, two year senior secondary certification and there is also a one year year 12 only program. If we go to the next slide, you can see the accreditation that we offer. On the left hand side is the Western Australian Certificate of Education issued by the Government of Western Australia. Centrally, we have the transcript of results known as the WASA, Statement of Student Achievement. And finally, the ATAR, a university entrance rank which students can use to enter university anywhere around the world. And just on that, if we move to the next slide, these are the types of subjects that students can study with the Western Australian curriculum right here in this school. They can be combined in different ways to create different pathways. All of these courses involve knowledge, skills, the general capabilities that prepare students for the world that they are going to enter once they leave school. Those are university-aligned courses. If we move to the next slide, we also have some what we call general courses, which are pursued by students for interest and because they want to learn more. These courses are non example So again, they can be combined with ATAR courses to create different pathways. Next slide, please. Um, we'll skip that one. Keep going. So, a globally recognised qualification that can take you anywhere in the world sounds pretty impressive. If we go to the next slide, my government is also very serious about students from India coming and joining us in Western Australia. Our Premier, our State Leader, is offering $50,000, $20,000 scholarships known as the Western Australian Premier's Bursary. 
That's 50, 20,000 scholarships each year, specifically for students who are studying the Western Australian curriculum overseas. So if you're a student in this room, you would be more than welcome to apply for these bursaries. The next slide shows that there are also 10, $50,000 scholarships. The State of Western Australia has sent me here not only to launch the curriculum, but to tell you about these opportunities as well, to come and join us in Western Australia, and to make the most of the opportunities that we will forge together. I look forward to the signing ceremony and to meeting some of you afterwards. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Peter, for giving us an insight into the Western Australian curriculum modalities and how the Western Australian curriculum will impact the future of education in India. It is now most appropriate to move into the main course of the event itinerary, that is, the Memorandum of Understanding Science Ceremony between the DC Consortium of Institutions Punjab, India, and School Curriculum and Standards Authority, Australia. The DC Consortium of Institutions which is one of the oldest and leading educational leagues serving the cause of education in North India since 1946 needs no introduction. It is imperative and apt to mention that the DCU League of Institutions established in 1946 is in its 77th year of unmatched educational prowess. For the last 77 years, the DCU Consortium has been committed to provide world-class education and cutting-edge technology to thousands of students some of whom are today adorning high-profile positions in various fields across the country and abroad. Hence, it is no surprise that only a league like the decent consortium of institutions could have pioneered in signing a memorandum of understanding with the School Curriculum and Standards Authority Australia to offer the Western Australian Certificate of Education WACE program in India. Hence, Without much ado, it is an absolute honor to invite on stage Dr. Anil Gupta, Mr. Peter Bryant, Mr. Anthony Joseph, Mr. Ganesh Karamnil, Dr. Gopal Gopalakrishnan for the formal signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the DCM Consortium of Institutions Punjab India and School Curriculum and Standards Authority Australia. This memorandum of understanding obviously bears testimony to the fact that the DCM League of Schools as well as DCM Young Entrepreneur School is providing a global perspective and a platform wherein Indian students, not just from the DCM group but from elsewhere as well, can partner with us and they can partake in the Western Australian Curriculum and Standards Authority program, that is WACE. We are the first League of Institutions in India who have pioneered for this project and are offering the WACE, that is the Western Australian Certificate of Education Program in India. That calls for an applause, I guess, ladies and gentlemen.
round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Education transcending the geographical boundaries. Because we will now be having the unveiling of the plaque visibly the center of innovation for school leadership being established at DCM Young Entrepreneur School under the ages of School Curriculum and Standards Authority, Australia.
it might be pedagogies, might be various methods of assessment, infrastructure, the very thought. So I am happy that today we are embarking on this relationship with SPASA under the aegis of Government of Western Australia and we see a lot of alignment, a lot of shared vision, a lot of commonality in our ethos, our approach. Like Peter just mentioned that we are not a commercial entity, we are not businessmen, we are educationists by heart. And same goes with DCM. It's a passion driven organization and I see a confluence of not two organizations coming together with glorious past and its legacy. I see confluence of vision, confluence of minds, confluence of thoughts to make the learning a better experience, much more purposeful and need based for the students who are gaining education in our schools today. For friends from Australia, just a bit on the Indian education landscape, which is the largest K-12 segment in the world. We have almost 1.5 million schools in India, all diverse in its genre, from government schools to self-funded schools, to the schools run by the municipal bodies, schools run by the corporates. And we have a whopping 260 million school goers in India. Just in the normality. So to take care of the aspirations of the future of this magnitude of young learners is a Herculean task. And as we see the world today, more getting into a mode of globalized society and Indian government also opening its doors for the FDI in education with almost 9.2 billion uh, USD FDI already invested in the last couple of years. And it's a very thriving segment which though at the moment is around 44 billion USD, but in next few years by 2025 perhaps it's going to cross 100 billion USD. And we already have a new document called National Education Policy 2020 and in furtherance of the same we have a beautiful document called National Curriculum Framework which has been released recently. And with this advent of EdTech scenario and a lot of children aspiring to go abroad, you know, grasping to adopt international best practices. And in the scenario of emerging technology with AI and data science taking the center stage. So we always be looking forward to what better, what next. So in pursuance of these efforts, we have started this initiative with SCASA, where are students from Ludhiana, from DCMS, which I must, you must have gone through the presentation. It's the first of its kind school of entrepreneurship in India. Friends, uh, what has been preventing education system, particularly in India, from you know getting into that becoming a knowledge hub is being lack of risk taking ability. It's been the system over the years has been shy of any kind of diversions. So it takes an effort, you know, it takes a calculated risk, it takes a whole lot of brainstorming to come up with these kind of initiatives, I am talking about DC and yes. And to take this thought 
So not only to other states, we have 38 states and UPs in India to various parts of the world. So I am happy that you know uh, DCMS, which has already uh, created ripples by initiating this thought of creating entrepreneurs during the formative stage itself, and we intend to produce some of the youngest startups in the world. For us, age is no barrier. So I am happy that uh, we have initiated and we have signed this MOU with Casa today. And as I mentioned, that you know, there is a lot of common ground, there is a lot of alignment, and I am sure that you know it's going to benefit the students of Ludhiana and Punjab and other parts of North, Northern India and NC. I am very sanguine that you know this is going to be another feather in our cap and we together you know uh, take this uh, uh, transformation you know bringing a paradigm shift in the way education used to be perceived and the way I mean it's going to look like in the future forward together you know uh, in tandem and uh, be like comrade in arms and uh, there might be you know few teething issues uh, you know uh, since uh, this curriculum starts is coming to India for the first time so so I'm sure that you know we have a strong team and even if there are you know some uh, teething issues in terms of pedagogies or assessments or you know already uh, Stasa has been approved by the government of India Ministry of Education and uh, you know the icing on the cake is the students you know getting this qualification Western Australian uh, certificate in education <coughs> while studying in DCMS. Uh, already Peter you know uh, has mentioned the kind of uh, scholarships the premier of that state is you know uh, already offering. So I'm sure that when you know, times to come, students from DCMS and students from Ludhiana will derive maximum benefit out of this program and we will ensure this seamless entry in the best of the Australian universities and other universities in various parts of the world. So, so I am happy that you know, uh, uh, already uh, there are other countries, you know, uh, Indonesia, China, and, you know, I told the Japan and some other countries, they will be taking benefit of this uh, uh, curriculum. So we have, you know, uh, uh, brought this curriculum to India and I am sure that you know, through all the educators sitting here, so uh, we'll uh, spread a word around, and uh, uh, in times to come, maximum students uh, will take benefit out of this program. And I'm also thankful to Iquari for uh, creating this entire thing and you know, facilitating this, uh, you know, building these two organizations together. And uh, we are also, uh, you know, the sideline setting up a center for innovation and training and research. And just for your information, Peter and the entire team, we are already in the process of setting up India's first national institute for school leadership. Because what we realize that, you know, it's the leadership which brings the change, it's the leadership which sets the course. And uh, we intend to uh, train uh, aspiring leaders who are uh, wanting to make a difference in this education segment. Because uh, we believe speed of the angel is the speed of the train. You know, unless we have uh, the bunch of passionate visionary leaders, I mean, the job might not be easy. So we are already in the process and we will uh, not stop here. We will explore more synergies and uh, we will see that, you know, how we can consolidate and make it a long-lasting sustainable relationship for the betterment of the entire uh, student community and uh, for the betterment of the society and betterment of the world. So again, uh, my heartiest gratitude uh, to all of you for coming all the way from Australia and uh, my heartfelt thanks to uh, the entire team from head office and uh, over uh, shining stars of DCMS, you know, who within a short span of time, you know, I, I really admire your diligence and uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that a lot of our educators, you know, are uh, getting into the mode of, you know, becoming entrepreneurs themselves. So I think uh, that is the way forward for DCMS and uh, today marks the beginning of uh, another uh, uh, glorious era for this organization which though still in its infancy but uh, we have big dreams and uh, 
uh, we are going to uh, take it forward, notwithstanding any challenge which comes our way. So thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so very much sir, for your kind words of wisdom. You always inspire us to do our best and be our best. We all take tremendous motivation from your experience and insights. The Roberts Foundation of the same group of schools, club with innovative pedagogies of WACE, opens up immense possibilities. This event would be incomplete without the presence of Ms. Yuenita Haley, CEO of School Curriculum and Standard Authority. Yuenita reports to the Chair of School Curriculum and Standard Authority and maintains a strategic reporting relationship with Director Journal. She will grace the occasion virtually with us directly from Australia. So let's welcome her with a huge round of applause so that I can repeat you straight to Australia. Examination Centre focused on university admission. 
Over the past century, the statutory role and responsibilities of SCARSA as an education authority has broadened significantly to meet the ever-changing needs and expectations of national and state education policy, the community locally and internationally, industry and the economy at large. Over this period of time, SCARSA's function have come to include having the responsibility for establishing a well-rounded curriculum which can be differentiated to accommodate all students from pre-primary to year 12 and to support student wellbeing. A curriculum which, is, which effectively integrates skills and knowledge to enable students to become confident, creative learners and active, informed global citizens. Setting and monitoring standards of assessment and achievement to enable effective reporting of every child's progress and to contribute to the certification process for the WACE. Kindergarten curriculum guidelines that provide a curriculum for early childhood education, which is modelled on national approaches to play-based pedagogy, which is instrumental for learning in this age cohort, and the development and administration of ATAR course examinations to support students' university admission. Curriculum reform and development and standardised state-based and national testing. In 1987, we saw a significant addition to SCARS's role and responsibilities with the launch of its international education program to deliver WA kindergarten to year 12 curriculum in schools located overseas. SCARS's international education program was the very first of its kind in Australia. Since its inception, SCARSA has grown in the number of countries in which schools are implementing the WA curriculum, and your chair mentioned some of those previously. But they include Bangladesh, China, Indonesia, Japan, Malaysia, Mauritius, Singapore, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Vietnam, Turkey, Lithuania, and of course now India. On behalf of SCARSA and its board, I look forward to our partnership and working with you into the future. Enjoy the celebration this afternoon and I trust that our partnership will be long and successful and that the curriculum will support your students to flourish and succeed whatever their pathway beyond school may be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Yenka, for your virtual presence in today's event. It is a morale booster for our team and to encourage us to do better for a young generation. I'm happy to hear you twice. Thank you. Following the prior is virtual presence of Mr. Alan Ginoni, a retired secondary principal with the Department of Education. He was secondary principal of the year in 2016. As a principal of Canning College in Perth, he worked with thousands of international students prior to their commencement of university studies in Western Australia. Over to you, Mr. Allen. And greetings from Perth. It's a great privilege to be with you today, and I do have fond memories of your wonderful country. I send my regards to all personnel from the CEM Young Entrepreneur School and from iQuery. I am speaking to you because of my background in the delivery of Western Australian curriculum in overseas schools and delivery to international students in Western Australia. Some relevant aspects of my history include 15 years as Principal of Canning College, the Centre of Excellence for International Students studying in the Western Australian school system, extensive experience working in country with schools and students in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, China and Vietnam. My small but wonderful experience in India involved working with schools in Mumbai, Delhi, Rajkot and Ahmedabad. In partnership with Australian universities, I've helped to create pathways for international students from school to the highest quality universities. I completed a Churchill Fellowship studying curriculum provision in England, Scotland and France and also taught O and A levels in England. 
given my professional background, I've been required to think deeply about the experience of international students studying Western Australian curriculum in Perth or overseas. Most of what I say today also echoes feedback from teachers, parents and students. For overseas students studying scholars and curriculum, there is often a fundamental trans, uh, transition that they make from more passive learning and didactic teaching models to constructivist educational practices that emphasise inquiry learning and which regard each student as an active participant and collaborator in the classroom. In making this transition, there is very often a need for students to be more adventurous in their learning practices and to engage fully with experimentation and questioning. Students from a variety of different countries are most often excited by this, sometimes daunted, but they clearly identify and value the changes. Cooperative learning strategies in Scouser programs support the development of personal and social capabilities that are embedded in the curriculum. As you will be aware, interpersonal capacity and team building skills are modern day requirements for leadership in education and in the workplace. A key aim of Scouser curriculum is to develop critical thinking skills so highly valued in higher education and eventually in professional practice. University partners have, on many occasions, indicated to me that international waste graduates progress well at university partly because of these skills. I would like to make a shift from key attributes of teaching and learning to focus on four valuable features of SCARSA programs that are of considerable benefit to waste overseas schools, their teachers, students and parents. One, the University Entrance Assessment Program is based on 50% classwork and 50% examination. This practice supports constructivist teaching by placing immediate value on the daily classroom activity. Students are absolutely explicit about their appreciation of this structure. They most often enter their final exams with confidence derived from success in their completed assessments. Two, specific English language courses in the race are attuned to the needs of international students. As a teacher of English, I have seen the significant benefits of these courses to students who may have English as a second language or who need additional support in this area. Three, students who complete the Scars of Waste program gain an Australian tertiary admissions rank. I have supervised the transition of many, many international students to further education. While the vast majority of Canadian college graduates progress to the wonderful universities of Perth, some move to the east coast of Australia, some to other English-speaking countries, and yet others chose to return to their home countries. I do not recollect a single case of the Australian tertiary admissions rank being rejected as an entry standard. While this cannot be taken as a guarantee, it is certainly true in my experience and in that of my students. Four, SCARSA will provide very significant assistance to schools which offer the waste in India. Schools and teachers are supported by SCARSA in making the transition to waste and will have access to high quality teacher professional development. Western Australian curriculum experts will be available to provide collegial dialogue and guidance. I have seen international curriculum of various sorts delivered in several different countries. I am not aware of another program that offers such substantial professional guidance. A brief conclusion. 
I have worked with many international students who have engaged with Australian curriculum at school and university level. They and many of their parents have told me very clearly that they have benefited enormously from their international experience. And most can comment eloquently on the diversity and inclusion that is at the heart of international education. While I am certainly not an expert on the Indian education system, it is evident that Scalise's curriculum content and beliefs about teaching and learning align with the aspirations of India's national education policy and with the need to enhance teaching and learning to meet the challenges of the 21st century. DCM Young Entrepreneur School and its way students will benefit significantly from Western Australian curriculum and from the challenge, joy and aspirations of transnational education. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Mr. Alan Janoni, for your insights into the school standards and curriculum authority. Moving ahead, we would like to inform that now we will be having a presentation on the Center of Excellence. Thank you so very much, sir. And I'm so sorry for taking over. It's time now to showcase the talent of our conference band, who will enchant us with their miraculous performance. The band comprises of the brilliant member of DCM family, who will cast them with their captivating voice and extraordinary stage presence. The talent to bind our audience with their voice with music is no mean feat, audience. Dear ladies and gentlemen, the members of DCM family group who are going to be here presenting this conference band, they have practiced hard. And their voices, I promise, you will remember to the end of the time. And while they are setting up, let's quickly talk about the music, which is a good track, which is a good tool for pedagogy. We can easily teach our kids in the classrooms using music. The team members which will be presenting here, they have been using their voice as well as music to deliver the knowledge in the classroom. It is also important for us to inform the members and the delegates from Australia that at this consortium of institutions we follow a very, a very unique approach that's called as the PLP. This is called as the Personalized Learning Program for all the post-scholastic activities that are running on our campuses, be it uh, music, dance, arts, sports, etc. So for example, all the other schools which are having just teachers who are teaching and taking periods and lectures for a particular discipline, for us, for example, if we have a particular section, within that section we have students who are taking up different disciplines amongst that post-scholastic activity. So for a music lecture that is there, there are different disciplines that are taken up by the same section students under the personalized learning program.
Whoa. I was about to say it wasn't below this performance, but I guess I need to say it was indeed a power pack performance by the DCM League of Institutions Confluence Band. Maybe have a round of applause for the gentleman. Thank you so much. Moving ahead, it is now most appropriate to invite on stage Mr. Ganesh Karnil, Faculty of Arts and Society, Charles Darwin University, Australia, and founder iQuery to walk us through the Center of Excellence for International Careers and Education, slated to be conceptualized at DCM Yes. Amidst your applause, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Um, what a great to, I mean, thank you, especially you know, for me to uh, get a platform to start at a really high. Uh, and as uh, Dr. Gupta said earlier, uh, we've been blessed to be the partner in this partnership. So, where do we stand? I stand in front of you as a parent, as an educator, and so are my team, team members. Uh, we, come to, we came together to address some of the key issues that students, in particular from other countries, were facing in Australia to start with. We started off, I started off with the students on my campus, but that has led to, that quest has led to, or that query has led to what we have today as I query. And we've gone further ahead in collaborating with universities, and pandemic was the time we had a lot of time to think about. And that's when we started forging institutional uh, or academic partnerships. Besides assisting students to see their future or their careers as appropriate for them, we also believe in forging long-term relationships because relationships are pivotal for trusted partnerships. And that's where we stand today. So what we present here is a collective effort of many, many uh, educationists with me over the last five years or so. And certainly, through this partnership, there arrived an opportunity for us to be ongoing, you know, partners ongoing. Because when you create a bridge, you know, the pillars are important, right? And it's also important to service that bridge. So, what if we provided our students the thought of beyond school, right? And and what do we what, what would happen if we can provide that visibility? And that's what we. Uh, we are doing, or we hope to do, we are hoping to do, to the Center of Excellence for International Careers and Education. So next one, please. Yes, uh, it's focused on career, but it's also focused on life choices. Yeah. That's what the Center of Excellence, Center of Excellence for International Career, Careers and Education is. Yeah. Partnering with uh, schools like DCM, yes, it makes it easier for us to be present among the people who certainly need to start think, thinking about things much before what I did perhaps, or what many of you did perhaps, thinking about the future of Kenya. And obviously, we hope for the target outcomes here, some of which are the uh, provision of planning, preparation, and support. So if you look at the current scenario, planning happens in some forms, preparation happens in some form or the other, and support, especially when it comes to international students, they are fairly limited within the campus of the universities. And that's what we wanted to address. Yeah. So, that's how you plan. You plan and then hit the target. The, the idea behind this concept is to help students reach their target, targeted uh, career, targeted lifestyle, and targeted jobs, if that, that's what they're looking for. We cover three aspects, mainly here. Yeah? Career. And migration is a word that everyone talks about at least when they arrive, or as soon as they arrive on the shores of Australia, New Zealand and many other uh, attractive destinations. And 
Of course, we do deal with admissions, and we have put admission at the, you know, at the bottom there because admission has to happen anyway. But what does not really get discussed to a greater extent, or to the extent it should be, is the career, right? And then, how do we prepare for this? The preparation, generally what we find, generally again, is that we start thinking about a career towards the end of our school years. And in many cases could be the last few education fairs we would attend, right? What we would like to do is to make it part and parcel of their school life. So, the day somebody walks into this school, they should start also considering looking, you know, with their options, looking at uh, opportunities, and that is possible only if we can make it visible for them. And that's exactly what we hope to do through the Center of Excellence for International Peace and Education. Some of the uh, preparation that anyone can understand, there are a lot of other things that we uh, have packed in for this, uh, for, for the students for years to come. But some of them are language preparation, of course university application, you know, applying to universities, giving admissions, and scholarships. So these are, of course, uh, you know, terms that everyone is uh, familiar, everyone is familiar with. In terms of support, three departure. Now again, this is a term that everyone knows. There are quite a lot of institutions that offer three departure support. But what we do here is, what we do differently here is, when a student walks into year 11, we hope to give them a seven year plan. Two years here in school and five years at their destination, be it India, be it Australia, be it any other country in the world. So a seven year plan is what we hope to present all our students, in particular students who would be opting for the Western Australian curriculum. Uh, and post arrival support includes the five years of that if they come to Australia or New Zealand for now, hopefully in other countries where we can have a kind of support infrastructure. In Australia and New Zealand, what we do very, very particularly uh, religiously is that we meet our students every semester. We have a meal with them. And that's something a parent would love to do, isn't it? To be able to be with the child at least twice a year, have a meal with them, and we cannot be their parents, but we can be representatives of their parents. So that's what we do. We, we do it for the parents, and imagine if your child is in Australia or New Zealand and you receive a photo from us of have them having a dinner with the rest of the kids and us, that would be a start of, you know, kind of a conversation as a kid. And that's why I said, you know, I stand here as a kid and that's what Thank you. And the seven year package is for, in particular for students who would start with the West Australian curriculum in year 11. But if they would start at year 12, it would be the six years. But six years is kind of a nominal number. What we also have, and it's not, you know, it's not yet ready to be presented, is that there's a lifelong association or linkage. Because like lifelong learning, we would like to hold, hold on to our students. Like a parent, like, you know, yeah, they may grow out of school, they may grow out of universities, but you still want to keep them close to you. So we have strategies and plans in place, trust us, Sooner, we be in a, in a, within a year's time, we should be in a position to unveil it, especially when our students who have just arrived after the borders opened, they are about to leave the universities. When they start working, that is the time for us to unveil that. And we'll be soon back with that plan as to how we will retain our students with us beyond universities, beyond employment, and beyond migration. Uh, I think we have this maybe. Yes. How do we do this? We don't do this by ourselves. As you can see, we have a considerable number of best institutions in the world, some of the best institutions in the world from Australia and New Zealand. We also have Puna, we have